Hello, hello, hello. God bless you. It's me again today, Bishop Wooden here, and I'm fired up. I'm fired up even more than usual, more than normal, and you know that takes some doing. Last night, my friends, I was in a church service where my soul was set on fire. The word of God was preached with power and authority. Yokes were destroyed. And I'm talking about strong gospel delivered. I'm not, you know, P Patrick Wooden, God bless you, my friend. I'm not moved by uh, sermons about uh, getting over, uh, beating your haters and, and, and people trying to convince you that you're entitled to everything uh, and that, uh, that everyone has done you wrong and you're some kind of victim and, oh, my Lord. Lord, the whole world is against us, but we're going to make it somehow. The devil is a liar. Everybody's not against you. Don't give yourself that much credit. People, uh, people aren't going to wake up every day thinking about how they're going to hold you down or keep you back. You, none of us, quite frankly, matter that much to, to, to the masses. But I heard a word that was right on time, and the word was preached uh, actually here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We had a mighty guest speaker. The Lord put on my heart to have three nights of youth revival. Now, it had to be the Lord because we keep a hectic schedule here, but the Lord put on my heart to have three nights of youth revival, and the Lord put the speaker on my heart. Uh, the youth pastor here, the elder John Amanchuku, he also serves as my first assistant. God said, put him up for three nights. Let him preach with power and authority. Uh, incorporate our all of the marvelous youth workers that we have here. A sister missionary, Douglas, oh my God, the lady just doing a tremendous job working with the program, making it happen. Matter of fact, she put the program together and we are having a move of God. And last night he preached from, he preached from uh, Acts, the, the, the speaker here, Acts chapter 19, verse 26 was the, was the, the scripture that he derived this subject from. It says, moreover, uh, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost all throughout Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people saying, this is the King James Version, saying that they be no gods, small g-o-d, which are made with hands. You see, in Ephesus, they worship the god Diana, and they got these statues of Diana, and, uh, and, and Paul said, wait a minute. There are no gods that are made by human hands. And Paul persuaded people and turned people away. And listen, Paul was right then and it's true now. There are no gods that are made by the hands of men. As a matter of fact, uh, in Athens, uh, which is supposed to be the center of intelligence, the, the birthplace of one of the birthplace of the capital of learning, in the capital of learning, men were doing one of the most, one of the silliest things that, that humans can do, and that is they worship gods that were made by their own hands. We worship the God of the Bible, the God who made everything. I'll never forget when I first met Jesus in 1977, I was asked by a friend of mine on the football team. I remember him. I remember the question like it was yesterday. Good friend of mine, a guy named Terry Allen, just a fantastic guy. He said to me, he said, hey, preach, listen, is the Lord God because we make him God in our minds or is the Lord God because he's actually God? And, and he's true. I said, let me tell you something, man. I don't know much about the Bible. I don't know much about scripture, but I know this. The Lord God I serve, he was God long before I recognized him, and he's not a figment of my imagination. We don't, we didn't make him God. He made us human. We didn't create him. He created us. And to, from that day to this day, I have not been proven wrong. The God of the Bible is the maker and creator of everything. And the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, John said this about Jesus. Without him was there not anything made that was made. Now, let me get back to this revival. You got to come out tonight to hear this preacher. I was blessed of the Lord. Yokes were destroyed. And this 
meeting was a vision that the God of the Bible gave to me. And he showed me the speaker. He showed me this meeting. And part of what we're doing is we're arming our young people. Oh, my Lord, that they not inflict on themselves or bring on themselves self inflicted wounds. Yesterday was the 50th anniversary of the assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., one of the greatest men of God to ever walk this planet, a man of God that all America, not just the African-American community, but all America owes a tremendous debt of thanks. He was a man who believed that the God of the Bible was the true and living God. Now listen, We've come a long way in this country. We're not where we were back in the 60s. God has blessed us. But many of the things that's holding our people back today, many of the wounds, let's be honest, they are self-inflicted. And we don't want our, our young people to, make, to, to bring on themselves self-inflicted wounds by making bad decisions, by participating in behaviors that's antithetical to their productivity, by doing things that they ought not to do. So we don't just want our young people on the defense, but we want to arm them and make them offensive people so that they can participate in the American dream and take full advantage of what this country has to offer. Now, this is not politically correct, and I, I will uh, offend some, but I'll say this. I'll say this, and I make no apologies. When you have Latinos, Hispanics, and others who fight to stay in the country, the, the, the dreamers who want to stay here, people who come in who brave deserts, who sail oceans, who do all kinds of things to get to America because they know that if they can get to America, they have a shot at a better life. I will not convince my black brothers and sisters, the African-American kids who were born here Oh, this country is against you. You can't be anything in this country. You can't get anywhere. America is no better off. Things haven't changed. Uh, we've come a long way, but we got a much longer way to go. The devil is a liar. Everybody's recognizing that if you come here, you make good decisions, you work hard, your, 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 the shot, the opportunity that you have to be somebody and to do better are much greater. The odds are in your favor. Listen. The, the Constitution uh, doesn't guarantee the outcome, but the uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is a part of what this nation is all about. And let me tell you, last night, the Word of God went forth. Our young people were blessed. Hey, I'm an adult. I was blessed. Everybody was blessed. So tonight's service is for everyone. Come and hear the word of the Lord. We featured one of the ministers of our church. He's in college now. Young Minister Evans, that young man preached with power and authority and what a tremendous night it was. So I want you to come hear the word of the Lord. As a matter of fact, tonight and tomorrow night, we have two more nights to go. With where we went last night, Man, I'm just wondering, what is God going to say tonight through the man of God? I know that the Lord is going to say something great because it, the vision was three nights. We have two more nights to go, and we want to be here to hear the word of the Lord. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Oh, and by the way, bring your Bibles. <laughs> bring your Bibles and come ready to hear the word of the Lord. And you might want to bring those shouting shoes. Don't put the ones on that hurt your feet. You might want to put on something where you could just let go and let God. You know, I, I, I personally believe, you know, I, I, I actually, my little philosophy is I put on the, my best, the best that I have, the best that I can afford, the best so that I can lift my hands, wave my hands, praise the Lord in the best that I have. I don't have any garments that are set aside that are too good for praise. I don't have anything that's too good for worship. 
If it's too good for God, it's too good for my back. If it's too good for God, it's too good to be wrapped around my neck. It's too good, it's too good. If it's too good for worship, if the shoes won't shout, I don't buy them. Because everything is for the glory of the Lord. God bless you. I'll see you here tonight.